Hi, everyone. Welcome back to KringleCon. Um, I'm coming to you live from ELF University, and I wanted to thank everyone for joining when malware goes mobile. A quick detection is critical. And you can see here that I am a good ELF. I am happy to greet you. You may come across some bad ELF while you're here at ELF University, hopefully not too many. But for this presentation, I'm going to be the good ELF and teach you quickly how to identify mobile malware and how to isolate it and just get it away from your network. A little bit about me, I'm the Senior Director of Digital Intelligence at Celebrate. I'm a senior instructor at SANS and a course author, and I am simply mobile obsessed. And you can see here, I'm going to sprinkle some magic into your life, hopefully, when we are looking at mobile malware. Something to consider is the threat is real. When I talk to a lot of people who do incident response, mobile isn't really on their radar, and it needs to be. So it's kind of a hidden threat that a lot of us aren't aware of. Um, something else to consider is these devices are always with us. They are very personal to us, and they may have the easiest access to our digital life. Think about this. Most people unlock with biometrics. Most people use the same passwords over and over. Someone could easily shoulder surf. Think about how frequently you switch through applications and how quickly you're doing this. Most of the time, it's mindless. You could be in WhatsApp and clicking through chats, and then in the next message or a moment you're in your email, and now you're on another third-party application, most people aren't even aware of where their chats are going, who they're clicking, what is downloading. So you need to really focus on how quickly we're communicating with these devices and just understand how easy it is once malware hops on your phone to actually hop onto your work network or hop onto potentially your work computer, cloud, these devices are very, very vulnerable. My device, I've always been really good about keeping Bluetooth turned off, not scanning QRC codes, but here's the issue. I have an Apple Watch, so now Bluetooth is turned on. I'm talking to you right now from my AirPods, so Bluetooth is turned on. All of these things are a threat. Um, we're leaving the door open, and there are way too many questions that are left unanswered, so just be very, very careful and know the threat is real. So now I want to help you get some footing here. So in ELF University, we want to make you as successful as possible so that you can get back to enjoying your holiday. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have an Android image and I loaded it into Physical Analyzer and I did get a full physical extraction, which means bit by bit, everything from beginning to end. The first thing I'm going to do is cheat and I am going to go straight to my downloads directory. Now, this is not everything that's downloaded to the device. It's just things that have been downloaded in a possible unusual way, per se, so not from the Play Store, essentially. So here I see under Downloads, I see one for Chrome. I'm gonna follow that trail. Why would we not? Let's do what all else do, and our curiosity is peaked, and we're following this trail. So now I've pulled the thread, and I have some more information here. On the left, I can see Google Chrome, and then I can see something about Dropbox, which is interesting, where the information is stored, and a date time stamp. Those three pieces are gonna make you so successful. So I'm gonna start letting this thread and the entire spindle unravel. So I click on the first part and I can see that something named Com Battery Extender APK was downloaded on 1-3-2019 at 1957. That's interesting. You can also export the source file if you wanted to right here, but we're gonna keep digging. We can then see how it was downloaded. The person was referred to Dropbox from Chrome. So we know that someone was in Chrome looking at something. They had a reference to Dropbox that ultimately ended up downloading that COM battery extender, which is our malware in this example. Not only do we know that, we know where it's saved. It's in storage emulated zero downloads. What I would do next is go to that directory. When you go to that directory, magic is going to happen. Holiday magic right here. You are going to see that there is a file called course page HTML, which is what the user actually clicked on to get to Chrome, which is then an embedded Dropbox link, which is what they clicked on to ultimately get infected with that malware. Think about how quickly we just did that. So this is the perfect example of how everything can just work right. Now, that may not always be the case. So when those methods are a dead end, this is where timelines are key. When do you think the device became infected? When did your incident occur? 
Or when did the person claim that their phone started acting weird? That is now your timeline. You wanna look for chat. You wanna look for anything where a link could be shared. So think about this. You share links through email, chat messages, third-party applications, standard SMS. That's typical. Look there with your timeline. Look at any apps that are running in the background. Now, application usage and keyword searching, those require more of a mobile forensic skill set. So if you're interested in learning stuff like that, I've blogged a ton about it. I'm going to have that slide at the end for you. But just be aware that it may require some more investigating on your part to uncover it when it's not as easy as just looking in the downloads directory. So if you like things like this, and you wanna go into overdrive with me, the happy elf on the right-hand side, keep your eye on things I've been working on. I am a research addict. There is no hiding it. Um, I blog on my personal website, smarterforensics.com. Not only do I blog there, I post all my presentations. I give at SANS events and other outside events on that location. I also blog for Celebrate. So if you go to celebrate.com, you'll find not only blogs, but also Ask the Expert video series. I report a Tip Tuesday every week, which is little hints, two minutes or less on things that are help your investigation. And obviously my smartphone class, 585. I hope to see you there if you like that. Pay attention to webcasts, but where you can really take concepts like this and apply it is by playing the holiday hack challenge. The only way you're going to get better is to practice. Free hack fests and hack challenges and CTFs are fantastic and they're such a gift and you're insane if you don't eat them up. So I hope you enjoyed this straight from Elf University. If you wanna reach me, you can see Heather Mahalik on Twitter. My email address is heather at celebrate.com or heather at smarterforensics.com. And I am very responsive. I will get back to you. And I hope you had a great time and I hope you have a fantastic holiday season and that you join in this holiday hack challenge.